All right, welcome back to Mr. P. Helps with Algebra 2. This is Unit 6, uh, Topic 1, SLT uh, 5, I believe. Um, so we're talking about z-scores now. Um, so we have our normal distribution, which we've been seeing this empirical rule data before. Um, so we're being told that the average score was 75, so I'm going to put 75 right here in the middle. And then our standard deviation of 8, which means I'm going up by 8, so this becomes 83, and then 91, and then 99. And then going down, you're subtracting 8, so this is 67, and then 59, and then 51. Okay, so it says if you scored an 83%, that means you scored right here. What percentage of the class did you score higher than? Well, we know it's the 68% right here plus the 13.5% here. So I can just add up all the categories that are below the 83. So once again, so that's 68 plus 13.5 plus 2.35 plus 0.15 which adds up to 84%. So you beat 84% of the people. If you scored 91%, what percentage of the class did you score higher than? So 91 is right here. So that's the same 84% that you beat here, but you also beat this 13.5%. So you add 13.5% more, and then you get 97.5% is the answer for B. If you scored 91%, what percentage of the class did you score higher, did higher than you? Okay, so 91% would be right here. That would be everybody else, which is over here, which would be 2.5% of the people. Okay, so um, back to our hypothesis. So Mr. Fell's fourth period took the same exam on their scores that were normally distributed. Distributed. So here's first period and fourth period. Now, all, a student in first period and fourth period both scored an 88. So why is it difficult to determine which student did better compared? Now, if they got the same score, um, we can see 88 is above this. It's, this is a lower mean than this, but also has a higher deviation. So that's what makes it tough to compare. So we want to know, how do we know who they did, which class they did better in? And that brings us to the idea of z-scores. A z-score tells you the average amount of deviations that you are away from the center. So if you, the further you are away from the center, clearly the better you did. Um, the further to the right, the further below it than the worst that you did. Therefore, using the first did period, so what is the z-score of the following score? So the way to find the z-score, okay, so 91, so this would be a z-score of 2 because it's two standard deviations above the mean. 67 is one standard deviation below the mean. 99 would be three deviations, one, two, three deviations above the mean, so the z-score would be 3. And 63, 63, keep in mind, is in between here, so that'd be negative 1 point something. Um, so we're going to need to find that point something. So the formula for finding z-scores is to take the actual data points and subtract the mean and divide it by the standard deviation. So 78 minus 75 divided by 8. 78 div minus 75 is 3, and 3 divided by 8 gives us 0.375 is our z-score. So this is 95 minus 75 divided by 8. So I'll do this top first. 95 minus 75 gives us, okay, I don't need a calculator for that. So that gives us 20. And then 20 divided by 8 is 2.5. 56. Okay, so 56 minus 75. 56 minus 75. Oh, I didn't clear my calculator again. 56 minus 75 is negative 19, and then divide that by 8, and you get negative 2.375. So these are both pretty rare scores. One's way above and one's way below. So there are eight bars in the normal distribution. The mean is in the middle, or median is in the middle. The mean, median, mode are always in the middle. There are blank bars on either side. So there's four bars on either side of the middle, which is the mean or median. So which student did better than the prospective classmates? So we can figure it out now. So 88 was their score, minus 75 divided by 8. Do the same thing over here. 88 minus um, 73 divided by 12 to find out who has the greater z-score. So 88 minus 75 gives me 13. Divide that by 8, you get 1.625. 
And then over here, 88, clear that out. 88 minus 73, then divide that answer by 12, and you get 1.25. So clearly it looks like the person in first period who got an 88 did better than the person in fourth period who got an 88, which seems kind of funny to say that, but they did better compared to their class. Now, if I click on the Z-score chart, 1.625, uh, what you can see on this Z-score chart is what percentage of the people that they beat, 1.6. Two, five. Now, I'm going to say that's 1.63. So 1.63 would be right here. So they beat about 95% of the people. 1.25, so you go 1.2 and then go over to 5. 1.25 beat about 89% of the class. So I'd rather beat 95% of the class than 89% of the class. So that's just, this is called a Z-table chart, and this helps you turn a Z-score into an actual percentile. All right, and that's where I'm going to stop because I showed you how to do Z-scores. I even showed you how what a Z-score means in this case. And thanks again for watching. Have a great day.